The first time I came in here and I looked at these butterflies, it was overwhelming to see them. The whole gene pool of the monarch butterfly is sitting here in the trees. To get in this place, we actually came in on logging roads. And even in those days, there was a lot of logging going on. And we realized that the butterflies are totally dependent upon these OML trees. Another one breaking up. Look at, look at it now, look at it. If they get down a little bit, it doesn't get as cold. But it's just so dynamic. Well, I started studying monarch butterflies in 1954. The monarch has the most complex insect migration and really in many ways the most complex migration of any animal in the world. By the end of August, millions and millions of monarchs have built up their numbers all across the northern U.S. and Canada. Short day length stimulates them to migrate south to the Michoacan overwintering OML forest. And then once they're here, they spend the whole winter. There's a massive mating ceremony. They fly back to the Gulf Coast, and over the summer, two or three generations are produced before the cycle repeats itself. So the guys that come here have never been here before. So just think these butterflies have come down all the way from Canada, and finally it's they've arrived. It's incredible. The Oyamel Forest, which is where the monarchs overwinter, is one of the rarest forest types in Mexico and it is probably one of the most vulnerable. The average family living in this area consumes about 35 cubic meters per year just for firewood. The majority of the communities are basically just living off the forest, whether it's turning the trees into chairs or into tables or into pallets or into floors or into toothpicks. This is what they live off of. La Cruz Habitat Protection Project started to grow trees here in my nursery and to be able to give them away to the people in the Monarch area. I am Jose Luis Alvarez and we're standing in the middle of a pine forest that I planted eight years ago at Rancho Hacienda La Cruz. Since we began this project in 1997, working with one ejido called El Rosario, we have expanded from the very northern part of the monarch overwintering area, Cerro Chinqua, all the way south to Cerro Pelon. The strategy is to plant sites in and around the monarch preserve so that those can be future sites for wood extraction so they won't have to go up into the natural forest to cut wood. We did a study in collaboration with the World Wildlife Fund for the Mexican government. And what we did was to compare aerial photographs of the forest over a period of, of 28 years. And during that 28 year period, the forest had been degraded 44%. Was either gone or degraded, thinned to the point where monarchs could not use it. You have the farmland down here, or the forest that was turned into farmland, and just above it, what's left, is the natural forest. And this is where the monarch butterfly is overwintering. As you can see, there's not much left of the natural forest. These fields are so eroded that what they produce on it, it doesn't equal what they've invested. We're trying to transform little by little all of this farmland that was once forest back into forest. We're standing in San Andres, which is in El Rosario. And this particular plot of reforestation belongs to Jose Luis Cruz. He planted these trees three and a half years ago. These trees have never been watered. They've never been fertilized. La Cruz Habitat Protection Project convinced these people to stop planting oats and corn and to start planting forest once again. Look at this. This is overwhelming, man. These trees are now about, what, 30 feet high? And we're standing on the same plot of land four years after we filmed the first time in this particular area. When I brought the trees, they're about this size. You don't see the dust anymore. You don't see the rocks. Look at this, man. Just look at this. This is all beautiful cover on it. Under it, you got rich soil now. Look at the color of this. It was so damn eroded. This is the proof. Those are 30, 35, 40 feet high in seven years. 
we have an alternative site to extract wood, and this will take pressure off the natural forest, which is the area where the butterfly overwinters. Well, the land we're on here is in the core of what was a presidential decree protecting the butterfly area. There was a core zone where there was supposed to be absolutely no cutting whatsoever. And the illegal loggers moved in here about two and a half years ago. And we're taking out these trees that are in the core zone, supposedly controlled by the federal government. Look at how big this is. Just look at this. This is an OML. Since 2000, we now know on a report that was released by World Wildlife Fund, 12,000 hectares have been destroyed. That's inside the reserve. At least half of that is in the core zone. It's not just increasing gradually, it's going up like this. 12,000 hectares is basically a fifth of an entire reserve that's been destroyed since the, since the 2000 decree. It's unbelievable. If it keeps going on the way it is, the habitat will no longer be fit for the butterflies, let alone for the people. We're establishing wood production areas. We're establishing reforestation areas within the, uh, the zone of influence, if you will, of the monarch habitat. Each of these communities has different ways of managing the process. They all provide community leaders that help decide how the trees are going to be split up amongst the people. We pick these key community leaders to help us distribute trees because they know who's going to be dedicated to reforestation over the long run. We don't pay them anything to, to plant the trees. They need to invest their own money in planning, their own work. They need to fence the sites for the first few years while the trees are young. The only thing I do is I give them, you know, the right quality trees, the right variety of trees at the right time, transport it as close as possible to where they're going to plant them, and then I teach them a couple of simple planting techniques, and the rest is just to motivate them a bit more, and it's up to them. They know what they're doing. They're forest people, planting trees and taking care of them and nurturing them. That's part of their lives. Demand is there for domestic and industrial consumption of wood and it's not going to go away. The demand for cutting trees is not going to go away. You know, if you plant 200 hectares of trees in a year and nearby the illegal loggers are cutting out 500 hectares, it's, it's a losing battle. We need to go in a, a different direction and the different direction is not planting two and a half million trees in 10 years, but planting at least a million trees every year, at least that. My hopes and aspirations and dreams would be just to continue doing this on a bigger scale. To produce one million trees strictly from donations and give them away and uh, teach people how to take care of them, to continue with education with the children and with the adults, to see it expand to uh, Lake Sirawen, Lake Pascaro, and to all these indigenous uh, communities who need the help. I don't believe that we can plant trees in an attempt to recreate a natural forest ecosystem. But what we can do is provide alternative areas for people who are forest people to manage the forest, get the wood that they need, and leave the rest of that natural fir forest alone. La Cruz Habitat Protection Project was formed to grow these seedlings and to deliver them and get them in the ground at no cost to the people. We need to expand vastly after this illegal logging. There's a lot to do and we need, we need funding to do it. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah.